Hello everyone, and welcome to RBL Talk. On this week's show, we have some club news. We take a look ahead to our next match against VFL Wolfsburg in the Bundesliga. We also overview the Man City game in the European Champions League. We also see how all our players are doing on international duty, how they played, and the results. And we also have the RBL Talk segment with your supporter input on the show. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. RBL training camp confirmed. The dates and location of RBL's winter training camp have been confirmed. RB Leipzig will prepare for the second half of the season at a winter training camp in the manga. The camp will last six days, 2nd of January to the 7th of January 2024. And Leipzig will also play a friendly while in Spain, though the date and opposition are still yet to be confirmed. Leipzig set deadline for Klostermann to decide on future. Lucas Klostermann stalling on a new deal. RB Leipzig have reportedly told him they want him to decide on his future before the end of the year. Lucas Klostermann is apparently stalling on extending his contract with RB Leipzig, which expires at the end of the season. According to Kicker, the versatile defender has had an offer on the table for some time, but hasn't accepted it yet. The report claims that this has led to RB Leipzig giving Klostermann a deadline, telling him that he must make a decision and inform the club of his plans by the end of the year. Klosterman has seen his playing time increase recently, starting Leipzig's last three Bundesliga games. He is incredibly reliable, RB Leipzig coach Marco Rose said recently. You know exactly what you're going to get, and what you might not get, but what you do get is a lot. Klosterman joined RB Leipzig from Bochum in 2014. He has made 272 appearances for RB Leipzig, scoring 13 goals and providing 12 assists. The local Leipziger daily newspaper reports that former RB captain Peter Galacci is also entertaining the notion of heading to America's MLS in the coming January transfer window. Reports that Swedish attacker Emil Fulsberg of RB Leipzig may be headed to Leipzig's sister club, New York club, surfaced at the beginning of the week. For those that don't know, that's New York Red Bulls. Saxony's Leipziger daily newspaper now reports that the German club one-time at number one keeper and captain is considering following suit. Hungarian netminder Peter Galacci, who shared an agent with the Swede, might also see his future in America's MLS. The 33-year-old effectively lost his starting place to back- backup keeper Janis Blaswich following a long injury layoff. Galacci's Hungarian compatriot Willy Orban now serves as the regular squad's captain. RB trainer Marco Rose has stated Galacci between the sticks twice. Sorry, apologies. That started Galacci between the sticks twice in the DFB Pokal this season, while this blast switch handed all 11 league starts. The paper claims that Galacci still under contract with the German Red Bulls through 2025 is a hot topic with the MLS side. Fulsberg and Galacci share a combined 10.5 million euro estimated market worth. Galacci, like Fulsberg, has been with his current club since 2015, making a total of 283 appearances across all competitions. Manchester United are continuing to scout RB Leipzig centre back Castello Lukeba, despite the 20 year old only joining in the summer. Manchester United have shown an interest in signing the former Lyon defender in the summer, but did not bid against Leipzig for Lekeba. However, despite missing out on the 20-year-old, United have continued to send scouts to Saxony to watch Lekeba in action for Leipzig. It is unlikely United will be successful with any type of bid next summer, as the Frenchman has a contract at the club until 2028, having joined from Lyon in the summer for €30 million euro to replace now Manchester City centre-back Josco Gardevoir. After a setting-in period, as well with an injury to Willy Orban, Lukeba has found himself a key piece of Leipzig's defence in recent weeks and looks comfortable on the left or right next to Lucas Klosterman or compatriot Mohamed Simakan. That's all for the news for this week. Following up after the extra show for last week, we have the rest of the international games. Played on the 19th of November, was Hungary and Montenegro. Hungary won that game 3-1, 
still no sign of Peter Galacci. Sweden 2, Estonia 0, also played on the 19th of November. Emil Forsberg played 72 minutes before being subbed off the pitch. He had three total shots, one goal, 77% pass accuracy, four touches in the opponent's box, and seven passes into the final third. Another standout performance from the Swede. Also on the 19th of November, Belgium 5, Azerbaijan 0. Louis Appenda came on the, on the pitch in around about the 46th minute mark and played the rest of the game, only having one shot and eight passes. He never really looked a threat in that game. On the 20th of November, Slovenia beat Kazakhstan 2-1. Benjamin Sesko played the full 90 minutes, converted a penalty right down the middle of the goal, had 38 touches, two in the opponent's box, one pass into the final third, and was fouled twice. He was always a physical threat, but failed to be the goal-scoring threat, and instead opted to be the player to take the defender's attention so others could be freed up to create chances and also to score. On the 21st of November, Botswana 1, Guinea 0. Ajax Mariba played 22 minutes for Guinea, and he did all right. Nothing absolutely fantastic, but it's good to see him representing his country. Also on the 21st of November, Central African Republic 1, Mali 1. Amadou Haidara played the full 90 minutes and got through unscathed. And on the also and last but not least, Austria 2, Germany 0 on the 21st of November, starting with the sole German international Benjamin Henriques, as both David Raum and Janis Blaschwitz did not get picked. And I am absolutely fuming that Janis Blaswitz did not get picked. I don't think it would have stopped us from losing both of those games. That being said, I do think that if you're going to call up someone of the caliber of Janis, you've got to give him the number one goalkeeper. He's earned it after all. And yes, this is a Leipzig show. And yes, I'm biased. But I'm very disappointed in former boss Julian Nardersman for picking him but not actually playing him. Uh, Benji's played 37 minutes, two total shots, three passes into the final third, two touches in the opponent's box. He wasn't great, but he wasn't entirely poor either. For Austria is where he had three players that played. Xavier Schlager played the 90 minutes, one shot, 76 pass rate, five passes into the final third. One touch in the opponent's box, six defensive actions, and 10 recoveries. Nicholas Seiwald played the 90 minutes as well with 80% pass rate, four passes into the final third, seven defensive actions. And last, Christoph Baumgartner played 81 minutes, one goal, and assist from three total shots, five touches in the opponent's box, two passes in the final third, with three defensive actions, and for me, was the best player in the game for Austria and the Leipzig players in this game. Finally, we come to Gibraltar and Netherlands, where Netherlands won 6-0. Xavi Simmons played 27 minutes, coming in on the 63rd minute mark. Only had one shot, which was over the crossbar. Didn't light anything up, but he had a good run out nonetheless. And that's everything for the international break. Having an update on our injury list now, with Danny Olmo still out until early January due to a shoulder joint separation, he has already undergone an operation and is working towards his return. Willie Orban injured his knee when playing for Hungary against the Czech Republic in September. He is now training individually and on track to return in early December. Peter Galacci suffered a bruised toe before the SC Freiburg game and is on track to return also in early December. And El Chadial Bishabu, my apologies if I've said that wrong, MCL tear has been training individually this week following his MCL injury. And Timo Schilek is fit again, back in training and available for selection. A quick look at the table now before we go further deeper into our game against Wolfsburg. 10 points separates both teams. We're sitting in fourth. With 23 points with a win, drawn, and loss ratio record of 7, 2, and 2. 
out of 11 matches, with a goal differential of 18. Wolfsburg sitting in the mid-table position in 11th on 13 points, with a win, drawn and loss record of 4 wins, 1 drawn and 6 losses, with a negative 5 goal differential. Diving deeper into the past matches with VFL Wolfsburg in the past 20 games, we have won 10 at 50%. Wolfsburg have won 5 at 25%, and the other 25% of the time there has been a draw. Our most recent meeting was the 1-0 loss in the DFB Pockel just three weeks ago at the Volkswagen Arena. Before that encounter, we managed to win the last three games on the trot. Some facts on coming up in this game are... Leipzig are ranked 4th in goals scored per match, averaging 2.5 goals per game. Leipzig have kept the most clean sheets in the competition, with 5, and are ranked 4th in shots on target per match, averaging 6.3 shots per game. Our opponents Wolfsburg are ranked 12th in goals scored per match, averaging 1.4 goals per game. Wolfsburg and RB Leipzig have not drawn any of their last 5 matches against each other, and a player to watch is Jonas Wind, who has created the most big chances for Wolfsburg with five. What I'd like to see in this match is intensity and pressure. The last time we met in the DFP Poco, it seemed we lacked our press and intensity on the pitch. I don't know if it was due to player fatigue, or the DFP Poco not being a target set out by Marco Rosa this year, or if the players took the game lightly. I just don't want to see a repeat of the previous encounter. I also wouldn't mind seeing Ajax Moriba given another shot. With squad rotation being something I feel Marco Rose doesn't do enough of, players like Moriba should be given opportunities to either show Rosa what we are missing, or show potential clubs what he can offer them in a way of a loan or permanent move, if he is not part of the plans at RB Leipzig. Also having a look at the Champions League fixture in Group G against Man City in Manchester. As of recording, Man City haven't lost in six matches. City have won the previous two matches against RB Leipzig, and they are unbeaten in eight home games. A couple of these things may change depending on their fixture with Liverpool on the weekend in the Premier League, but that still won't change the fact we have won against them in the previous two matches. Sorry, haven't won against them in the least previous two matches. What went wrong in the 3-1 loss in the reverse fixture was that we didn't take the game to them, and when we did, we scored. And when we got the game back on our terms, it wasn't until we switched off in the final 10-15 to 15 minutes we lost it, with some poor football, as if you switch off against the top sides in world football, they will make you pay for it, on the scoreboard. With both teams already going through into the knockout stages, this game will be more used for tactical purposes as I don't think we will top the group and I don't think that's something that Marco Rose has his eyes set on when we go travel to England in the coming week. A quick shout out to the Shades of Blue podcast and Crunk for my time recording with him for his podcast. Shades of Blue podcast is a Man City podcast and I enjoyed recording with Crunk for an episode of theirs. If you'd like to give them a listen, or see what they're all about, I'll leave their handle in the show notes and just look up Shades of Blue podcast. Now onto the RBL Talk segment. Remember, you can be a part of the show too with the RBL Talk segment. You can even come on the show as a special guest. The way you do this is by interacting with us on Twitter or email in at show at rbltalk.com. If you listen on Spotify, you can also get involved on the RBL Talk segment from the most recent show. You can reply back with your comments, statements, or anything you'd like to say on the show through Spotify as well. More information in, and in detail on how to get involved on the show for free in the show notes. There's just the one submission for RBL Talk this week, and it is from Dave Harmonizer1 on Twitter, or formerly known as X, whatever anyone wants to call it. And that is, we'll be at the Empty Head next Tuesday. I will post you some pictures of us in the town and at the stadium. I do look forward to those images, and I hope you enjoy the lads going over there, and I hope you enjoy the empty had, as you call it. 
And that's from Dave Harmon, which is Dave Harmonizer one on Twitter. I really do enjoy interacting with all of you, and I hope that we get some more RBL Talk submissions in the following weeks. As always, I'd like to thank the contributors for their contributions this week in RBL Talk. All backers, supporters of the show, and thank you for listening to this podcast. If you could take a moment to leave a quick review and rate us where you listen to this podcast, it really helps us find new listeners and grow the show. So until next time, I've been Justin Crozer. Bye-bye for now.